Tonight on TV TV, keeping the outrageous 60s alive with a heartbeat. And redefining the chat show, Dame Edna assaults her guests. And sitting in the hot seat to face the press. Good evening. Also tonight, one of Australia's most respected television journalists, Sue Smith, joins us to review Neighbours and the effect multiculturalism is having on our most popular soapy export. But first, Telecom's massive advertising campaign. Our television screens are saturated with the Telecom message. The business world is definitely going to be about larger organisations providing a range of services jointly with other large organisations. about 13,500 people in Microsoft, a worldwide network. Well, the ABC's Late Show produced their own version. In my film, it's all about good service. How can I pull the p if I'm dealing with an organisation that doesn't offer full, reliable service? When I call someone up and say, hello, is Mrs Wall there, Mr Wall, any of the boys? <laughs> no, then what's holding your roof up? I like to feel confident that call is going through. The telephone facilities over the next three to five years are going to be far more exciting than, than what we have here now. I can ring a client in Uruguay and say, hi, is your refrigerator running? Yes, well, you better go and catch it then. That's what it's all about. What other phone company allows you to do that? It's fundamental to the way we work. I should have the communications capability to ring someone up and pretend to be a radio DJ and tell them they've won a brand new car. <laughs> Telecom allows me to do that. There is no ability in my mind down the track to make prank calls with a phone company that doesn't understand your specific needs. That's why you'll find the partnership between me and Telecom becoming a lot stronger. They love f***ing around. <laughs> Let's talk about TV in the early morning. At some point after a big Thai dinner, 28 beers and a couple of Sam Bookers, and perhaps a visit to a discotheque, we've all found ourselves watching TV at 4 o'clock in the morning. Now, very few people are on full alert at 4am, so programmers don't usually schedule anything too taxing. But rarely do we find a show that's worth setting the alarm for, if not staying up all night for. Yes, Danger Man starring Patrick McGugan, a fine example of TV noir. Danger Man is from the great era of spies. Le Carre had just come in from the cold. Bond, James Bond, was in print but not yet on film. And still to come were The Men From Uncle, Maxwell Smart and Rocky and Bullwinkle. Oh, no, no, no. And now in the post-Cold War thaw, what a piece of history Danger Man is. I love that high-tech gadgetry that looks like they borrowed the sound man's hearing aid. And look at this early tracking device, conveniently located in the pipe stem. And uh, that transmits a signal for 12 hours. Yes, they were never in a hurry in Danger Man. Danger Man was sent to the far-flung corners of the Empire. Unfortunately, casting wasn't. Need some Chinese spies? Hey, a little eyeliner and mascara? Who'll know the difference? Tell me, what are your impressions? Of Mr. Simpson? I have hardly had time to phone me any yet. Well, I have. I don't trust him. You will keep an eye on him and report every act of disloyalty, however slight. You understand? Yes, comrade. I don't trust him. I should warn you, uh, people, especially boys, get excited about this show. Because when they were running around in short pants about 30 years ago, this was the best thing ever. Be careful of seeing it again. Cherish your memories. Remember, you can never go back to the past. <laughs> You have just killed your chief. Zhao Hei, they told me in London that you had 3,000 years of experience in this game. As humble beginner, would be grateful for enlightenment. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, the great age of spies is past. The KGB has finished, the CIA is regarded as the enemy, and MI5 use their skills to keep a close eye on Squidgy. Maybe they're still out there somewhere, crossing and double-crossing, but in television terms, they're in the graveyard. <laughs> TV TV reports the Nine Network may regret not holding on to crime reporter Steve Barrett. Barrett has turned up a scoop for his new employer, Tens Hard Copy, securing an exclusive with the father of notorious criminal turned police informer Raymond Denning. TV TV hears that one big name upset at being out scooped by Barrett is Nine's Mike Munro. According to Barrett, Munro told Denning's lawyer that Barrett is regarded as a farce in the industry. It seems Christopher Dean's marriage has been skating on thin ice and is now over. His wife of two years wanted him to end his ice dancing partnership with Jane Torville, a demand he refused. And a love-struck Romeo, Kevin Foster from Durham, England, thought he'd win his sweetheart forever by taking out a television advertisement to propose. But the public declaration of love embarrassed his would-be wife so much, she ditched him. Well, on a happier note, sharing birthdays today are dashing Dr Doogie Howser, Neil Patrick Harris, 20. Former Governor-General of Australia, Sir Ninian Stephen, turned 70. And the man in the caftan, Demis Roussos, is 46. My studio guest tonight is a television journalist with impressive international experience. Helen Vatsikopoulos is host of the SBS program Face the Press. Helen's assignments have included being at the Berlin Wall when it fell, covering the aftermath of the assassination of Rajiv Gandhi in India, and reporting last year the outbreak of civil war in Yugoslavia. Welcome, Helen. You're a busy Thank woman. You. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, your once-a-week job is hosting Face the Press, yes. and you're a full-time reporter on Dateline yes. on SBS. Very busy life. Yes, it is, yes, but it's a matter of organising yourself, I suppose. Given the low ratings of SBS, does Face the Press have impact? It does have impact. Um, a lot of people we've featured have been picked up by the other media. Obviously, somebody's watching. Um, Jimmy Barnes got a uh, spread in um, Rolling Stone. Um, Neville ran an editorial in the Sydney Morning Herald. Jimmy Barnes even got on this program. He certainly he, did. Because he kept saying, you know, you know. Yes, you I know. know, I know. What do you think about that? That's fine. That's the way he expresses himself. He comes from a working class background. He doesn't have the education perhaps that you do or other people do. And a lot of what he said about multiculturalism was perhaps more relevant than perhaps most of the Liberal Party today. I really loved your Face the Press with three ex-Prime Ministers, Hawke, uh, Gough Whitlam and Malcolm Fraser. Uh, tell me about that experience of talking to three Prime Ministers at once. It was wonderful. I mean, you would have thought that there would be a bit of tension on the day, and we thought it might be between uh, Mr Fraser and Mr Whitlam, given the dismissal. But um, ironically, it wasn't. I mean, they got on like a house on fire. But there's three men who have said such nasty things about each other for so many years. Yes, well, they're now elder statesmen. <laughs> and uh, two of them, of course, have had more time to get used to being in that role. The third one, who I think perhaps would rather have been Prime Minister than elder statesman, ex-Prime Minister, was a bit more jumpy than the others and um, didn't fit in perhaps that well into that mould. I like the Face the Press that you did on ethnic characters in, on Australian television. Tell me about that. That was... It was two young Greek Australians talking about, um, I suppose, the lack of representation. And on your program, you've you've just just had um, Chinese characters on Ramsey Street. Um, it was interesting in that we don't commercial television, let's say, doesn't reflect multicultural Australia. In your street, there are probably Chinese Australians, Greek Australians. But a lot of um, you know, mainstream television doesn't reflect that. And these young people were talking about how they've managed to do it, but they're doing it only because it rates. And mm. as the Chinese family in Ramsey Street may rate and may not. Does it, uh, you were born in Greece. Yes. Uh, uh, but most Australian television seems to reflect characters like me. Anglo, Saxon, white, Caucasian with 2.4 children and a Holden, that sort of thing. Yes. Uh, does that upset you? I think it'll take a while, as I said before, I think the commercial stations catch up with what is the reality of Australia. I think SBS does it, ABC does it, if we look at GP and we look at uh, you know, presenters like Annette Shanmour and 
it's happening. It didn't happen um, until about five years ago, I think. If you could have your pick of the three most important people that you'd like to interview on Face the Press, who would they be? Well, because I'm a journalist, I'd have to pick news and current affairs type people. I th I'd like to interview Bill Clinton. Right because he is leading the most powerful nation in the world, what has been uh, the world's policeman, but isn't wanting to fit into that role right now. Second um, one? Second, uh, Pol Pot. And third? Slobodan Milosevic, I think. Because? Um, because he gives very few interviews. Um, he has a bunker somewhere in Belgrade and he's perhaps orchestrating a lot of the events in Bosnia uh, very cleverly. Um, very, he'll probably go down in history as one of the key players this century, but as yet we don't know what role he's playing. Helen, thanks for talking to me. Welcome. <laughs>
down the track. Um, are we, in fact, given what you said, location is no longer of any particular importance, are we, in fact, um, making a mistake in emphasising the fact of our location in Australia in reorganising uh, our whole international relations? <laughs> Television goes underground while telephony goes overground. Um, have we, even if we're going to digitise it, uh, stuffed up in the terms of the, the whole pay television debate. Now the Guinness Book of Records doesn't have an entry for the world's longest question. Pity, because I think we just found a winner. Guess who's coming to Ramsey Street tomorrow night? Yes, after 1,938 episodes, the writers have discovered Asians. And I wouldn't be surprised if the Asian community regrets this 10-week brush with Australia's most popular export. They're not exactly facing a warm welcome. That would explain why they've got that big house in Eden Hills. What would? Room for the family. The Chinese, they like to bring over cousins, uncles, aunts, everybody. I don't suppose they plan to bring them all here, do you? To Ramsey Street? The writers have piled cliché upon stereotype in their depiction of the interaction between the Ramsey Street residents and the Asian arrivals. I have never been an admirer of Neighbours, and the three episodes I've watched with the Lim family do nothing to change my opinion. However, if Barry Humphrey's father-in-law, the famous poet Sir Percy Spender, is a devoted fan, along with millions of his fellow Britons, then the show must have something going for it, but not in its depiction of Asians. It was my greatest worry in coming to Australia. I've heard there's a high crime rate here and much hatred towards Asian people. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to alarm you. Some Australians have a problem, but uh, they're in the minority. I don't think we're looking at Logie-winning performances from the Asian actors. Perhaps a few acting lessons wouldn't have gone astray. However, Mrs Lim does have a point about racial hatred. It's one of our new neighbours from number 22. Well, that's all we need, an Asian invasion. Don't tell me you're worried about the yellow peril, old son. Look, mate, I don't care if they're yellow, black, green with purple dots, but they come over here, they buy up half the country, they take the jobs from the Aussies, it shouldn't be allowed. We've got enough unemployment without importing more. Ah, yes, he's nasty now. But what's the bet that over 10 weeks, disharmony and racial hatred will turn to all-embracing affection, with the Chinese adapting to our ways and the Ramsey Street residents participating in acute homily on racial harmony. But in the meantime, let's milk racial discord for all it's worth. Just a minute, Graham. I don't think it's right them coming here and then criticising us. <laughs> we were not criticising you, Julie. Your wife seemed very critical of my family this afternoon, Raymond, and all because of some harmless, completely normal teenage behaviour. Harmless? In Hong Kong? You are not in Hong Kong now. But if that's how you feel, maybe you'd be better off there. Julie, that's enough. I think we'd better go. Jenny, I'm sure Julie didn't mean... Every em word. Please, please excuse me. I'm so sorry. So, the scene is set for the Asianisation of neighbours. It troubles me that the Lim's presence lasts only 10 weeks when we have officially over three quarters of a million Asians living in Australia. Is this just a passing nod to multiculturalism? Or do the producers of neighbours fear a continuing Asian presence in Ramsey Street would lose them viewers? To me, this smacks of tokenism, like the token black or the token woman of 20 years ago. The limbs are neighbours token Asians. TV TV reports that Nine's Aussie sitcom All Together Now may or may not be finished. TV Week says the popular sitcom's been axed, but Nine contradicted this today. They won't, however, be making a decision on another series until later in the year. My Two Wives will replace All Together Now in August. The drug offensive begins its winter campaign tomorrow and plenty of TV stars have pitched in to help. Video Smash Hits hosts Michael Horrocks and Kim Wilson are leading the charge. They'll be hosting a number of unlicensed drug-free dance parties across the country. And in anniversaries today, 
Courtney Cox, who rose to fame as Alex Keaton's girlfriend in Family Ties, is 29 today. And where would TV trivia segments and music specials be without the Beatles? John met Paul today at a church fete in Liverpool in 1956. Everyone at TV TV appreciates hearing from viewers. Write, fax or use the 50 cent phone line from anywhere in Australia. Any thought you have at all is appreciated. Parts of this program are created from the ideas of our viewers. Thank you. Tonight's guest reviewer, he has been reviewing television for a long time. Jim Murphy started on the Melbourne television magazine Listener In back in 1957. He co-hosted a movie review show on television in 1971. He's worked on television magazines and he was a video critic on Graham Kennedy's Coast to Coast program a few years ago. Welcome, Jim. The ABC's new Sunday night series, Heartbeat. That's right, Simon, in what is probably my favourite time slot on television, which has traditionally become a slot where they show the good quality British product. And uh, we've had things like The Duchess of Duke Street and All Creatures Great and Small and Horsemen Riding By, and most recently, The House of Elliot, which I became very attached to because of its lovely production design of London in the 20s, but uh, probably mostly because of the immoderately attractive uh, Louise Lombard, who played the younger, daughter, the younger sister. Heartbeat is the new one in this time slot. It's uh, set in Yorkshire in the 1960s, and its central characters are Nick and Kate Rowan. He's a young London policeman. She's his young bride, a doctor. And they move from London to Yorkshire, uh, where she wants to start a practice as a doctor, and he gets a transfer to become Mr. Plod in the little village of Aidensfield, where he has to find, he has to come to terms with a whole range of different sorts of um, crimes, as you will see. So funny. The mystery of the dead run. The case of the murdered budgie, the lost sixpence. Gripping stuff, isn't it? Yeah, well, you forgot about the forged pig movement order and the village dog dustbin conspiracy. <laughs> what? I'll tell you later. <laughs> nice the, humour. Yes, they're very attractive characters as played by uh, Nick Berry, who was in EastEnders, and uh, Neam Cusack. And the series is really as much about them as a young married couple and about lifestyle in Yorkshire of 30 years ago as it is about crime. In the first episode, there was a, uh, I think there was something to do with a dog that ate a budgie. Uh, there was uh, a fight between two young gangs of teenagers who really looked a bit more like the members of the Young Liberals. Uh, and <laughs> also, Kate got into trouble when she applied for a job as a doctor and was knocked back because she was a woman. Well, of course, the moment that scene was played, you knew that sooner or later Kate was going to vindicate herself by coming to the rescue in a medical emergency, and that's exactly what did happen. In the next episode, next Sunday night, it's a little more serious, because Kate has to uh, deal with a, a wife of a farmer who at 39 and with six kids, she feels has already reached the end of her childbearing days and she prescribes the pill. Uh oh I'm telling you, you don't come round mine checking sex pills under my wife's nose again. You're a stupid, ignorant man. Why don't you behave like an adult? Mm, well, meanwhile, Nick's crimes that he has to deal with uh, include a hit-and-run uh, accident in which the victim is a sheep and also a complaint about something nasty in, uh, well, not the woodshed this time, but the local bus. All time. Let's stop Well, as you can see, there's something for just about everybody in Heartbeat. It's a low-key series and perhaps a little bit on the soap, more on the soapy side than we're used to from Britain, but I thought it was very enjoyable and I think it will get a nice audience at that time of night. ABC's still doing the right thing? They certainly are. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Tomorrow, how television is making our kids fat. Opposites attract a romance from May to December. And your turn. From the lounge chair, viewers review. Television intimidates many performers, but never Dame Edna Everidge, arguably Australia's most famous international star. She uses the medium in a way no one else does and has been doing so for over 20 years. Watch as she outshouts and outshines Chubby Checker. Good night.
Tonight on the 7.30 report, violence in schools. Has the closure of inner suburban schools left some teenagers hanging around the streets and some fiercely defending their territory? That's tonight. Why don't you join me?